have you reconciled your friendship with April Jones? No. Why haven't you extended? There, why would I extend grace? anything? You don't. I don't need to fix something I didn't break. So I don't need to extend anything. I don't need to extend my arm to pick up the phone to dial. I don't need to extend my thumbs um, to text. I don't need to extend my brain power or energy um, on a reconciliation. Um, I don't need to extend my lips anymore <laughs> to even talk about her. <laughs> wish her the best. You wish her the best. Mm -hmm. is, is the doors closed? Yeah. Forever though? 100%. Moniz, not forever, ever, ever, ever. Do but when I die, put her in the back at my funeral. Yes, there's no room because the back five rows on each yeah. side of the church, the the last five pews, those are for people that I don't like that I need in my death to know. I've literally told my cousins if lest you survive me and we are still young enough, this is how this seating is going to go. The people I don't like, I need them in the in the last five pews on both sides. The most ridiculous ones, I want you to make an example out of them. I'm going to leave some handwritten letters. I want you to read what I genuinely feel about these people and what I've carried with them in my, uh, carried in my heart. Out. Yes, I, what I think about them, feel about them, and have carried about them in my heart until I until my casket literally dropped. This is how she felt about you, literally. And then I want the next five pews on both sides to be the people that I'm not too sure about, but make an example for the rest of them. Make an example out of them for the other ones that I wasn't sure about, the ones that I know I wasn't sure about. Read why I wasn't sure about them niggas too. So that the rest of the niggas that I'm not sure about now know that maybe I'm in this group because I'm in this group. And so she would go in the last five pews of my funeral, for sure. If I died in the next, like, God forbid, knock on wood, yes, my please. baby. But lest I meet an untimely passing by, like, before the age of, like, 60, because I know I'll have, like, some cousins that really are still going to ride for me at that point. They'll execute my final wishes. That's how closed the door is. Like, because really? the back five pews also have to be dismissed because they're not allowed to go to my repast and get free food and entertainment. <laughs> so you came to church hungry for a service. You got read for filth, and now you're leaving before the repast. Who will be sitting next to April in that row? Is there anybody else that we may know that would be in the same row as April? Mm, no. Just okay. Not that I could think of. Okay. I'm shocked, uh -huh. Moniz. I, didn't, I I wasn't aware that the issue that you, the whole like a Marion April um, Moniz thing, because obviously I know you were upset because April started dating Fizz. And obviously. It was the lies. It was the lies. It was the lies. It was embarrassing because I had been defending them. I literally said out loud, to Kay Michelle, I don't think they'd be that morally bankrupt because I knew that they were hanging out and like vacationing and stuff from like 2016, 17, like literally pictures of them in Mexico, but it didn't look like a thing. Um, excuse me. And it was a group. So I was like, I don't know, I don't know whatever. So I never said anything to him or her about it. Um, I also know the father of my child, so I know he was mad at Omarion, and I know that this has been a thing that he has done to Omarion throughout the years, even when they were in the group. Um, everybody that Omarion liked, here comes Drew, and I knew that April was vulnerable, um, and so even when they came on the show, I still was like, not thinking they were a thing. My son hadn't mentioned it. Um, and then one day he did. Literally, like, just 
driving down the street in good old Calabasas. And my son's like, oh, there's where um, he said, no, da April and daddy have a house right here. I knew I was close to your house. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And he's like, yeah, except I have to share a room with Mega. And I was like, oh, okay. Never said anything to his dad, never said anything to her. And then one day I was like, what's the street cam? Now at this point, I've already, we've already been filming. Mm -hmm. Some months have gone by in between cam making that voluntary statement and this next occurrence, which is we're driving, literally, um, same road. And I'm like, what was the street cam? And he's like, I don't know. You need to ask my dad because that's none of my business. So he said, you need to talk to him about it. And then we started doing exchanges at the Starbucks on Ventura and Topanga. And it was like he would smash out of that parking lot. Like, sir, no one is trying to follow you home. Okay? I don't give a fuck. Um, I just don't know where my kid is living. But I, at the time, that made me mad because I'm like, I'm sure Omari knows where his kids are. But why am I being ostracized? And I don't, I didn't even fucking ask. Matter of fact, I was defending you little critters. You little hood boogers. I was defending you. Legit. And I felt like it was more of a disloyal action towards Omarion more so than it was to me. But did you feel like she broke the girl code? Oh, for sure. 100%. Um, and that's that's the ultimate betrayal for you. No, the ultimate betrayal was the fact that you joined in on the bandwagon of kick me while I was down. But then you sat there and cried about going through the same things, allegedly, at the hands of Omarion. So for you to have been a now single mom... And for you to be back on the same platform as me after you left um, because you were in a relationship and he felt like you guys should move on from that. Um, and then for you to have been experiencing the same things that I was saying I was experiencing, allegedly. Um, and then for you to accuse me of having a problem with you because you're dating him. I could give two craps about who the man dates. The thing is, then you start telling my son things like, oh, you need to ask my dad. The thing is, now you're showing up at my door at 10 o'clock at night, and you've never even been to my house and never even had my address, which means the only way you could have gotten there is that he gave it to you or he drove you. So which one is it? And he drove you to my home, and you felt comfortable enough to come knock on my door while my son was inside to give me the book for summer school. The crazy thing about that is... To say that you're not gaslighting me is crazy because the only time I don't unravel, for the most part, I have made some, had emotional breakdowns and outbursts in front of my child, yes. But when it comes to his dad, he's, I don't, that's not it. It's not, we don't do that. So, um, girl, fuck you because you knew I wasn't about to blow up in my own house in front of my child. And you come waving the book, white tank top, no bra on, like boxers. So it's like, you know, first of all, the fact that you were even comfortable doing that on my doorstep is nuts. Because I should have socked you in your throat and then tased you and watched you pee on yourself, but I didn't. So, you know, I just, that type of behavior, it wasn't the dating. You're, you're asked for that for sure. But it, then it was just like the mounting disrespect. It was crazy. It was wild. It was nuts. And then I was having to like behind the scenes because um, Omarion's manager is good friends with my mom. Um, so I was just like, okay. And that's what I always try to explain to people. For me, it's not, it's way deeper than just what people are seeing on the camera. This is a result of now my parents coming to me saying, okay, well, I know you didn't do this, you didn't cause this, this is not your, you know, yes, it's part of your storyline, but 
when you deal with it, we it, it would be best that you probably deal with it this way because then other things are affected. Mm -hmm. Friendships off camera are affected. Business relationships off camera are affected. If I fly off the handle, and I also don't like that, it's always me that has to hold it together. It's always me that's held to the you're better than that standard. It's always me that can't come undone, but that's not even my personality type. So it's something that I have to work on really hard. And now I'm in these scenes, guts bubbling, head hurting, back tight. You know what I'm saying? Tongue turning white, bitch, because I'm dehydrated, because I really just, this is not how I would handle things. But now I'm in here trying to handle things appropriately, and it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, fuck it. 